We go from one end of a diesel truck to the other on this edition of Performance TV, from fuel system upgrades to a bigger turbo. All this and more coming up next. of Performance TV, and this week we have Eric Wade here with us from the dieselstore.com. When you think about performance for diesel, you may not think about being able to add performance just by changing the fuel pump, but that's what we're going to do here today on this Dodge. Absolutely. This is the FAST Titanium Series Fuel Air Separation System. When you think of fuel system performance, like we're talking about here, you not only have to supply fuel to the injection pump, but then from the injection pump to the injector. So what we're gonna do before we put on our high performance injection pump, we're gonna put on a high performance supply pump. It's 150 gallon per hour flow rate, so it's more than adequately gonna supply not only the fuel we're delivering to the injectors, but also the necessary fuel to cool and lubricate that injection pump to make sure that we get the long life out of it we wanna see from our high performance products. And, and this actually won't go back into the tank. This is gonna mount somewhere underneath the truck? Right, the stock configuration on this particular truck, it was retrofit into the tank for the transfer pump. We're gonna actually put a drawstring in allowing us to pull fuel from there and this is going to mount on the frame rail underneath to not only give us uh, an easier mounting location but also easier access to change our Fil fuel filter and there are two on this particular system absolutely we have a three micron fuel separator and then we have a 150 micron water separator so that way we try to pull all the contaminants we can out of the fuel as well as make sure that we keep all the water out of the system to ensure that we're not going to get any rust contamination down the road it sounds like it's going to make the injectors last longer too that's the whole purpose of the air separation system as well you're actually going to be pulling the air out of the fuel so what that's going to do is lengthen the life of your injectors because when the pencil closes on the nozzle inside of the injector you're going to hit that fuel as opposed to air so air, because fuel has a much higher surface tension than air it's going to lengthen the life of your injectors oh and those things are cheap so that that's a really good idea hey tommy what do you got going on down there? You got the tank all out? What are you doing? Part of this install, you got to remove the fuel tank to get the old pump out of here. Then we're going to take the pump out so we can install the, uh, what would you call this again? This is a draw straw. Draw straw. Okay, draw straw. I keep forgetting that. I, I, it's a pickup to me. It's a fuel pickup. So we got to remove the old fuel pump out of here so we can install this draw straw. So we've done that already. Getting the fuel tank out, put the draw straw in. But don't think that this fuel pump here is going to stay out of the out of the tank because in order to tell how much fuel you have in the tank, you're still going to need this float level right here. So this pump's not going to be in action, but we're still going to use part of it as a factory stock vehicle to show us how much fuel is left in the tank. So put this pump back in so we can get the tank installed back in the truck. All right, Tom, well, the next step was we stepped underneath the truck here with Joe Kukuntz from thedieselstore.com. You have actually put together the some of the bracketry on our pump already. We've got some of the shims in here, this all ready to go. Where are we going to attach this to the truck? The pump actually gets mounted here to this cab support. Okay. Um, that keeps it tucked up underneath, and it's uh, nice and secure and clean. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to hold this pump up here. It looks like the way it tucks up underneath there, you're not going to see the filters or anything once it's installed. Nope, everything's nice and secure and tucked away, so if you do got to go off-road, yes, a pen, thank you very much. I'm going to mark my hole locations here, and hopefully we'll be able to see them. And this comes with all the hardware that we need for all of this too, right? All the hardware, all the instructions. Yeah, I noticed the instructions, color pictures, how often do you have that? Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, nice part is we're under a lift. We can actually do this in our driveway. You don't need a lift to do this job. Let's make it a little easier, but it's not bad. Okay. We're ready for the drill now. All righty. We got our holes marked. Let me find my hammer and center punch here. Hey, Joe, why don't I bring in a light for you so you can see a little better? Oh, that's a lot better. <laughs> I can see my marks. Makes a big difference. All right, we're gonna drill, let me put my safety glasses on. All right, what size drill bit are we using for this? This is a 3 8 drill bit. That metal's pretty thin, so you really don't have to do any pilot holes, right? Correct. All right, Joe, you go ahead, get that bracket put up there, and I'm gonna get right. some Teflon tape on our fittings that go inside the pump. Get these started. Joe, this has a couple of different things here. We could actually preheat our fuel, couldn't we? Uh, yes, you can actually plumb that with coolant from the engine if you wanted to and uh, keep your fuel warm. Um, if you're up in uh, cold climates, it'll help prevent gelling and, and other fuel issues that we have with diesels in the cold. 
All right, I'm gonna finish sticking these in here. And when we come back, we're gonna wrap this up and get that fuel cell back in there. This edition of Performance TV, presented by Low Car Performance Products, is being brought to you by The Diesel Store, your source for everything diesel. And by Transmission Exchange, the transmission superstore. And by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Welcome back. Kathy and Joe installed the new pump. Now we're going to put the fuel tank back in place. We put the new pickup in it. We put the old pump back in place. Now the pump's not going to work, but we're still going to use the float so we can tell how much fuel we have in the tank. Joe, are we ready to put this back in here? We're going to route these fuel lines up over the frame rail, guide them over to Kathy so she can hook them up to the pump. But what do we got to do to get this tank back up in place now? All right, we got it on our lift here. So we're going to uh, very gently pick up on the tank. And as you pick it up, I'll guide it into place. All right. You want, you want to do it with a jack here? Uh, yeah, do it with the jack. All right. We have a jack, no need to hurt ourselves. Yeah, I like that. It makes this job a little easier with the jack. I'm just holding the uh, retaining straps here out of the way so they don't get yeah, the As they go up, you can just kind of guide those lines over the frame rail. Right. We're going to kind of just feed them over the frame rail. We've left them long. We've connected them to our pickup tube so that. Uh, we don't have to try and reach up there. Yeah, I like that idea. Now, I like the idea of having them all along. You don't have to worry about uh, having them the right length when you're trying to put this up in there. Right. It's, it's better to cut it once than twice. <laughs> a little my way. There you there go. There we are. Wonderful. We're just going to snug her up and kind of right. let her hang there. All four these straps up into place. You should see a stud up there. There we are. Let me start this knot. Got one for me? There you are. And we're just gonna start at a few threads. We're gonna leave the uh, straps loose for right now in case we do need to shift the tank a little bit. Perfect. All right, got that, not a problem. All right. All right. Well, let's drop our lift out of the way here so we got a little room to work. So we got our fuel lines, and I marked the one that goes to our suction side here. That's a smart move. A little, so little tip there to yeah, so we don't have to go guess. up here and retrace where you where, which one goes where. Right. Yeah, this is our line to the tank, which is going to be our suction side. Leave a little slack so leave it's not a little tight. slack. Right. Do a little measuring here, very carefully. And we're just going to install our push lock fitting. Basically, you shove them into the line. It takes a little bit of force. There's no clamp. It's already secured. No clamp. On. They don't recommend you to use clamps because of the pressures involved, it could cut the hose. All right, so we have that one just finger started. All right, now we're gonna measure and cut that one. We're gonna figure our routing here. Let's see which direction we wanna put this. And we'll make sure that when we route these lines, they're not chafing on anything. There are no kinks, no, no major bends in them. Yeah, and it's a pretty straight across shot there from the top of the tank right over where the pump's installed. This tank has its own fuel return. Because of the amount of fuel that, the that this pump draws, the way it eliminates the air is it draws more than it actually needs to send up, and it will send most of that back to the tank. It bypasses it back to the tank? Correct. Our fuel return from the pump on the engine, the injection pump, that's going to stay factory. And we'll hook that back up to the sending unit once we're done with this. These pumps are actually marked, they're stamped. The feed line has a T on it from the tank, and this has an R on it, so you know you're going back to your return. We're started onto the return of the pump. Now, can we go ahead and tighten these we now? We can tighten them, them up now. Okay. Because for all intents and purposes, we're done right here. All right. I did route the main fuel line all the way up to where the injection pump is, and I have it tucked in and, and secured with a few tie straps. Oh, perfect. Along the frame just to keep here. it from from just wandering, to keep it from wandering, wandering on me. So we'll snug those up. All 
All right, Joe, we got the fuel lines ran. We can tighten the tank, put it back in place because everything's has been run now. We can tighten up the tank. We got to make a few electrical connections on top of the tank and to the fast pump, and then we have to run it up to the batteries for All the right. engine. Well, I'm going to finish tightening the tank. Joe, once you get the electrical harness, I mean, it's electrical pump, the whole fast system comes complete with a wiring harness. And while you're doing that, I'll finish tightening the tank. And uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, more on this project. <laughs> I caught up with Jesse Green from Greening Auto Company. Now we're standing next to a 55 T-Bird that just so happened to have won the 2012 Riddler Award, the biggest award in custom cars. What does that feel like, especially at such a young age, to win this award? It's pretty amazing, really. So a lot of hard work that goes into it, and whenever you're able to capture that, it lets it all pay off. How do you describe the, the Greening style? Understated and hopefully tie all the details for the car as an overall together. But why classic cars? There's just a passion there. I grew up with it with my dad and my great grandfather even was into cars. What was the first car that you worked on that, that really got the bug started in you? Dad's 35 Chevrolet two-door sedan that him and I built out in the garage out back and I was probably in my early teens maybe. Just being able to go out and work on that and exciting to actually see it come to light and come together and I think that's probably what had gotten me hooked. It's still a family business today, isn't it? We've got mom and my wife in the office and dad and I are out working. He handles all the paint and body work out there and I handle the customers and the fab work and, and it's just a really good mesh. I mean, you have that confidence of knowing that they're there and, and uh, they're going to be there too. What's next for Jesse? We're trying to develop our parts line for Greening Auto Company, and then we're going to expand out into some other exciting things too, but that's all in the wraps. <laughs> Welcome back to Performance TV. Well, while Tommy is back there finishing running the lines from our new fuel pump back there, Eric from the dieselstore.com, that's not the only thing you guys have. You cover the complete gamut of parts, whether it be for the Dodges, the Chevys. I mean, we got some injectors down here for a couple of the different Duramax. Yeah, absolutely. What we've got here, we'll start with our high performance CP3 injection pump. What this is going to do is make sure that we get adequate fuel to the rail. So if you're making any kind of performance injector changes on either your LB7, LLY, your 5 nine Cummins, we're going to be able to supply that rail to make sure we get enough fuel so that those bigger injectors are going to make sure that we get the power down that you want to deliver. We'd go back to the FAST system to make sure we're adequately supplying fuel to that injection pump, not only to make sure we can get it to the injectors and into the engine, but also to lengthen the life of both those injectors and the injection pump. And power, we're talking about new turbo here. Absolutely. This is the Garrett Stage 1 turbocharger for this particular application. We carry a Stage 2 and 3 turbo as well, allowing support up to 170, 270 and 370 horsepower over stock application. And you can check out all of that at the dieselstore.com. Absolutely. You know, when we think about where we started back there with getting fuel up here that's fuel, not air, not water, this is a something right here that we want to think about doing because these go bad a lot. Correct. This is the VP44 injection pump. Anybody that's got one of these generation of trucks will be very familiar with this pump. In this particular case, we're dealing with our HPX pump. We call it our VP44 HPX, our high performance or hot rod pump. In this case, it's 40 horsepower over stock, but since we've already got bigger injectors, more supply of fuel all the way to this injection pump, we're going to see 60, 70, maybe 80 horsepower over stock. Well, Kathy was busy telling you about all the parts that the dieselstore.com has. Joe and I have been getting this truck ready here to install this injection pump. So this pump here mounts down right in here, Joe. We've had to remove a bunch of parts beforehand to get to it. Tell me a little bit about what we've taken off. Okay, we've taken off our intake piping and our, and our intake heater. We've taken off our throttle position sensor and just moved the stuff out of the way. Whatever electrical connections we have, we've left them connected. No need to mess all with right. that. All right, I see we took the fuel lines off, but we took them off in three. We left them all connected together. Why is that? But the main reason you do not want to disassemble these fuel line sets, these rubber insulators are very important. If you take them off and misplace them or don't put them back on, you, the vibration of the engine will cause one of these lines to crack. So you don't want to do that. It's easier to take them off. You'll take some bolts off that hold these to the intake. You loosen them from your injector nozzles and from your pump, and you take them off as sets. You don't have to mess with the spaghetti. Yeah, don't ever have to take them apart. There Pretty easy. A little simpler, plus it makes sure it doesn't damage the lines. Right. All right, so what we got to do to get this injector pump off? I've taken these bolts out here and the bracket off of it. What else is left? All right, so we got the bolts out, we got the bracket off. We've removed our uh, crankcase breather, which just screws into the front. We've removed our large lock nut 
in our lock washer. Be very careful not to drop that lock washer down inside the engine. And all we gotta do is put a gear puller on the front of it? Uh, we're gonna put a gear puller on here, but the first thing you wanna do is, there's a keyway on this pump. You see the keyway here? Right. You wanna make sure that keyway is up at the 12 o'clock position. It makes install a lot easier. If you were to miss that keyway position, it'll damage the key, which can damage the pump. The vehicle may not start if you crush that keyway. So it's easier just to leave it at 12 o'clock, you know you where it's the, at? Bar the engine over to 12 o'clock, and the way I did that is I actually just put a 15, 16 socket and uh, ratchet over here on the alternator and just very gently barred it over, watching my keyway to make sure right. it's at 12. Perfect. All right. let's, uh, let's pull that off there. We got our gear puller here. Uh, this is something we sell. Uh, very neat design. It's two bolts and a plate. I'm going to feed this in here. There are two threaded holes in the gear. The nice thing is you don't have to take the whole front end off the truck to get in there to get there. Still a project you can do at home. We gotta move that bracket. And we have to remove this bracket and transfer it over to that pump. Leave all our caps on until we're ready to put the lines on. Keep any debris from the fuel system. All right, Joe and I got the bracket switched over from the stock pump and it comes with all the, all, all the hardware. We got a new O-ring we put yep. on here for yep. sealing. Yep. We have our keyway lined up at 12 o'clock and now we're ready to reinstall this pump. You just work her down in there and slide her straight in using your mounting studs for alignment. All right, sliding right in. All right, you, you're gonna feel for the keyway. Well, I think we're good. She slid right home, nice and easy. All right, Joe, this side's all tight. Now you wanna put the final torque on the front of it? The final torque, 125 foot-pounds. Hey, Tommy, you know the dieselstore.com, they recommend when you're installing the new pump like you are up there, you wanna make sure that you're not getting any air or anything like that when you get started. So they recommend that we use Stanodyne and put it some in the tank. Now this bottle will treat up to 60 gallons. We have about 15 in this tank right now, so we only need four ounces. So we're gonna go ahead and get some of this in. This week's ARP quarter mile quiz question comes from Patrick in Missouri. Patrick wants to know, how do you get into professional racing? You know, when you take a look at the drag race cars and you see the top fuel cars run down the racetrack at over 300, it looks like they're pretty easy to drive, but I wouldn't recommend that for a beginner. Patrick, if you want to get started in drag racing, you can go out and drag race your car that you drive to work every single day. Take it out to your local drag strip and get used to staging it and work on your reaction times and being consistent as a driver and then move up into a bracket car or a super comp car. There's lots of opportunities for you to do that and spend a lot of time, be a little more patient on your career and when you get a chance, if you do, to get into one of those nitro cars one day, that time you spent early on will pay off. If you have a question for the ARP Quarter Mile Quiz, send it to the address on the screen. If we use your question on the air, you'll receive an ARP Quarter Mile Quiz shirt. This edition of Performance TV, presented by Low Car Performance Products, is being brought to you by The Little Power Shop. We will not be undersold. And by Nomad Manufacturing, home of the elevated shop creeper. And by The Diesel Store, your source for everything diesel. Welcome back to Performance TV. Well, as Tommy promised, we're going to be doing an install of a brand new turbo on this diesel truck here. And, and Joe from the dieselstore.com, actually Tommy and Joe, they got it all out here. Joe, tell me, this is the old one. What's the biggest difference between the old one here and what we're gonna be putting in? The new one is a uh, ball bearing turbo, so it's gonna spool up a lot faster. It's also water cooled, which is gonna lower your exhaust gas temperatures. Okay. Um, that'll help you use all this fuel that we're putting into it now more safely and get better power out of it. And it, this thing's gonna spool up faster than the, the right. other one You'll too. get better throttle response and uh, smoother power, no crazy black smoke or anything like that. All right, Joe, what do you say we get started? All righty, let's stuff her in here. All right, it's out of the way. This turbo bolts right back into the same place. The only change we've had to make is adding a couple water lines. Now the gasket and everything comes with? All comes with the turbo kit. All the modifications, the water lines, everything comes with the kit. Trying to line up three or four things all at once. Right, and there's a little bit of weight here, so there we are. We're lined up with our exhaust. We're lined up with our intake, and we're lined up with our oil. Yeah, it's really just a few bolts here and there. Mm -hmm. They're all, they do tend to rust up being exhaust, 
So I recommend pre-lubing all your bolts before you start doing this. And Good if idea. you can, uh, run the truck a little bit. It's, it's not fun to work on a hot engine, but it'll make taking these bolts off a little easier. That's a good idea. Oh, don't get stuck. <laughs> there we are. Okay, we got our turbo tightened up. We're gonna connect our oil drain line. We have our new gasket also included in the kit. And we have our water line up here. There's your water return line. And we have a water feed line here that we replaced the stock feed line, which is supplied to the heater core. And now we're going to pre lube our turbo. We have the uh, drain line connected on the bottom. Take a little bit of engine oil, 1540, same thing that goes inside the engine. Okay. We're going to put it right into the oil feed line here. You need very much or? Not a whole lot. You just want to give it a couple squirts. When this thing starts up originally, you don't want dry bearings in there. No. Because it's gonna spool up pretty fast. Okay. So we'll give it a we'll give the impeller here a few spins. Make sure the oil works its way down. There we are. We can connect our oil line adapter here for our oil feed line. All right. All right, we're gonna connect our other water line. You got your crush washers, one on the inside, one on the outside. You know, we're gonna hook up our Intake pipe going to our charger cooler. Right, we'll tighten up our oil feed line. And then the last connection we have is the exhaust pipe. Now can you over tighten those back there? Uh, you absolutely can. It's like any other bolt, you can over tighten it. I would snug them up and then when you start it, you're probably gonna have to go back through and re-tighten these exhaust bolts and these exhaust bolts. After once it, it heats up after and it goes through a cycle. After it goes through a cycle and everything kind of mates up and seats up. Now, other than putting the oil in like you did, is there anything else we need to make sure to pay special attention to when we're doing an install like this? Anytime you replace a turbo, I highly recommend replacing the air filter. Okay. Because um, there's no point in stressing out that turbo you just spent good money on. Hey, Tommy, we got it all on here. I mean, this has been some great stuff at the diesel store. That's the fastest thing I've ever seen you do. <laughs> hey, I try to do some things fast, not just on the racetrack. I want to thank Joe and, and all you guys for coming out and all these great things that we've learned how to do here from the dieselstore.com. I want to thank you for joining us. And hey, we're going to have a whole lot more coming up next week on Performance TV. You want to come with a mic truck when you get done? Yeah, exactly.